Hey everybody, I'm Dylan, and welcome back to Chiptorials. Are you new to the MP Lab X IDE and not sure where to begin? You're not alone. Many users have experienced the same uncertainty when first getting started. However, with a little guidance, MP Lab X can become an effective and intuitive tool for developing your embedded projects. To support you, we're going to be launching a series of introductory materials focused on the general purpose Cortex M0 based microcontrollers. In the upcoming video, we're going to be using the PIC32 CM JH00C Nano, as well as a Curiosity Nano Explorer board. I'm going to be flashing these devices on the screen so you can get a better view of them, but just for this first example, we only need the C Nano. So, what is MP Lab X IDE? IDE stands for an Integrated Development Environment. And that's exactly what it is. A complete workspace where you can write code for your microcontroller, compile and program it, debug it, and even simulate how it will run. You can download MP Lab X IDE for free from Microchip's website. Just head over to www.microchip.com slash mplabx and grab the latest version for your operating system. Now that we finished downloading MP Lab X, we are here in our main workspace. Welcome to your main workspace. I'm going to go over a few basic navigation items and tell you where everything's located. So the first thing is our projects tab. This is where all our files and folders are going to live. Here's where you're going to find your source files and even your header files. Here's your dashboard. This is where you can get a quick glimpse of your project, the current device, device family packs or DFPs, which compiler version you're using and even how much memory is being flashed. You can also come here to edit your project properties. You can do that by clicking the wrench icon. And in the center, this is your current view. This is where you're going to control literally everything from writing code to configuring your micro. Let's create our first project. But before we do that, let's actually plug in our CNano board. One of the benefits to using an IDE is actual recognition of what board you're using and what extension you're using. Our IDE does both. So not only do we recognize the fact that we're using the PIC32CMJH00C Nano, but we're also recognizing that we're using the C Nano Explorer board as well. By creating a pro new project by pressing this button, we're thrown into a setup wizard. We can go through a couple of steps here to notice that we have a few things already pre-filled out because we are using an IDE. Another benefit. Here we can choose our latest compiler, choose a name. I'm going to name it JH Blinky because we are going to be blinking in LED. And then when we click finish, it's going to open MCC. And this may take a second, so I'm going to see you after this is done. Now we're met with MCC. MCC stands for Microchip Code Configurator. If for whatever reason it didn't open or maybe it closed by accident, you can always open MCC by clicking this blue button up here. If you want to update parts of MCC or some of the peripheral packs or maybe you want to download a library, everything like that is going to be within Content Manager, which can be accessed here or also via here in this button. Let's give a quick rundown of what and where everything is. Here we are in the project graph. This is our main hub for MCC. This currently has everything that we have in our project right now. And next to it is the project resources tab. This is an itemized list if you just wanted a quicker look at everything in your project. And below it is our device resources. This is everything that could be in your project, meaning all our peripherals, libraries, everything that isn't added to your project is going to be under here in device resources. Let's talk about how to utilize the project graph. The project graph is what communicates to MCC how to code your microcontroller. You may notice in the project graph workspace, there's already a couple of peripheral libraries and system settings in place. Clicking any of these tabs will bring up its configuration options. For instance, clicking system would bring up system configuration options. These are system settings specific to the PIC32 CMJH00, such as device and project configuration, Cortex M0 configuration, ports, and clock settings. There are some settings that aren't really tied to any peripheral or system settings, and you can find them here in the plugins tab. 
Up here, you may find commonly used ones such as clock configuration and pin configuration. Pin configuration, for instance, will bring you to a set of three tabs. One being pin diagram, and this shows you visually what pins are and aren't being used. Pin table, this will compare the peripheral to what pins are available for the peripheral in the multiplexer. Clicking one of these pins will make it unavailable for the other peripherals. And then going here in pin settings, if you knew which pin you wanted to use, you could choose that specific pin and choose the function then and there for it. And if we went back to our pin diagram, we can notice that both those pins were taken up and we see what pins we have left over. Now that we're done taking a look at MCC, we can get into programming and coding. But before we do that, I'm going to leave you with two more pieces of useful information. The first being the data sheet. The data sheet is essentially like the map to the microcontroller. It tells you where everything is, how everything works, and how peripherals interact with one another. If you ever run into a problem with your chip, you should always consult the data sheet first. And the other useful piece of information is going to be the user guide. The user guide is essentially the data sheet for the board. So there are some things that are really set in the PCB for the Curiosity Nano. And this is going to tell you all the pinouts for the Curiosity Nano and also some of the features and functionalities that it has. If you want to use your board better, it would always be a good idea to consult the user guide. I'm going to be providing a link for both of these in the description below and also flash them here. I'm going to show you how to program a blinking LED. First off, we're going to have to enable our SysTick timer. This is an internal delay timer, and this will be controlling the actual timing of the blinking. Then we're also going to have to set up our LED. The onboard LED is tied to pin PB17, according to the user guide. So we're going to make those changes, and then we're also going to rename this pin to LED. This is so MCC actually recognizes this pin as LED and will generate a set of API around it. Now that everything's done, I can generate my files. MCC is going to be generating your LED APIs, your system config bits, everything that you needed to get your project running in the background. That's all going to be located here in your header files and then also here in your source files. Let's talk about these files generated by MCC. Here on the left hand side in the projects tab, we can go through our file folder and look through the header and source files. These are the two main files that I'm going to be talking about. In the header files, we actually have all the names for all the API generated by MCC. Here in the port header, we have all our LED callouts. This is all the macros that we named via MCC by naming that one pin LED. If we went here to SysTick, here contains all the API names for everything that we would use SysTick for. And if we want to get a better idea on what they were actually used for or how to use them, we can do this cool little trick where we control click into the API. Control clicking the delay millisecond would bring us to the actual option here. And this is the actual one that's located in, within the source file. And if you wanted to make sure that this was the same one, you could actually go down to your source folder, click the same peripheral tab, and you wouldn't switch anywhere. And now we can put all those away and take a look at our main .c. Here, all we have to do is start our timer before we hit our while loop, and then also set our LED toggle, and then set a custom timer delay. I'm going to build this project to make sure it works. Build successful. And right now, I will show you how it looks. With programming complete, we have an LED that blinks every 500 milliseconds. That's just scratching the surface, but it's enough to get you up and running. 
If you want to go further, Microchip offers a ton of resources from tutorials and user guides to full training modules on Microchip University. We will be making future videos for this series, so please stay tuned. We're going to be posting our code examples for the PIC32CMJH00 on MPLAB Discover, which is our home for hundreds of complete code examples to help you get you and your application started faster. So go ahead, download MPLAB X IDE, try it out for your first project, and don't be afraid to explore. The more you use it, the easier it becomes. Happy coding!